everyone. My name is Alison Woodall and I'm a relocation specialist. That means I get to help you with the financial, logistical and emotional issues that make moving to a new state so stressful. And today I am going to talk to you all about how to decide exactly where your new hometown is going to be. I'm going to get you very clear on which states, which counties and which towns are going to be the perfect place for you to move to. So my goal over the next 30 minutes in this video, because there is a lot to cover, obviously you're about to change your life and move to a completely new state that may be, you know, the other side of the country. So it takes a while to get clear on what you want. But my goal during the next 30 minutes is to get you very, very clear on what you want from your life in a new state. And then to discuss the six things that you need to consider when deciding which state, town or community is gonna suit all of your needs. You will hear me say the word community quite a lot. When I say that, I just mean that as like that all encompassing term for wherever feels like home. It could be, you know, a tiny little farm in the middle of nowhere, or it could be, you know, in a vibrant apartment building somewhere downtown, wherever feels like home and wherever you're surrounded by like minded people and people that you love. That to me is where you found your community. So once we've done that, I'll give you the next steps to take after this video because 30 minutes is not going to be enough time for you to decide exactly where to move to, but it's going to get you so much clearer on what you want and one step closer to finding that perfect hometown because it's thinking about what your life is going to be like in your new perfect town or your new community that's going to get you through the stress of budgeting for your move, finding a home, finding a job, finding healthcare, finding schools and colleges if you have kids, and then taking care of all of those other things that you need to plan for when you move. But for right now, we are just going to focus on finding you that perfect place. We can worry about all of those other things in the next coming weeks. So how do you get clear on your wants and your needs? I like to separate it into three steps. Number one, your general wants. This is things like weather, landscape, what kind of social or political environments you feel most comfortable in. This is going to give you kind of a region or several states in the USA that are going to be a good fit for you. The second step is to figure out the wants that are specific to you. These are things like employment, schools and colleges, healthcare and hobbies. This allows you to focus from a region of the USA down to a specific state or maybe even a part of a state or even a city. And then the third thing you need to think about is what I call your lifestyle wants. This is how you spend your days, your evenings, your weekends and maybe even your vacations. And step three is the step that so many people forget. You get so busy trying to find the perfect home that you forget to dream a little bit and plan for exactly what it is that you want from your future life. Because I always tell people that I coach that moving is your chance to make your life better and to fix the things that you don't like about your current life. So let's start first of all with step one, which is figuring out your general wants. Your general wants are going to fall into five categories. So the first thing you need to consider is weather and landscape. Do you want hot and humid summers and mild winters? Do you want cold winters and mild summers? Do you care about humidity or, you know, do you want dry heat? Do you want mountains, lakes, oceans, uh, forests or maybe the plains? So that's going to be the first thing to think about is weather and landscape. The second thing you need to consider is social and political issues. This is things like COVID policies, which are a big issue right now. Gun laws, pro-choice, pro-life. Do you want a state that's religious and conservative or diverse and accepting? And they don't have to necessarily be mutually exclusive. Where we live right now, has a, it's a community that has a very strong kind of conservative religious underpinning, but it's also very diverse and very welcoming. So when you think about weather and landscape and social and political issues, that should give you kind of a region of the USA that fits your general wants. Then you need to narrow it down a little bit further. So the third thing to consider is financial issues, things like taxes, cost of living, house prices, grocery prices and gas prices is always a huge one. Um, I have a make the move planner and in that planner I list my favorite websites where you get to compare the cost of living and tax rates but a Google search will give you pretty good general guidance on financial issues. The fourth thing to consider is employment opportunities. Do you need to be in a specific state or in a specific city or region for your job or your profession? 
And then the final category of general wants is amenities. This is things like transportation, you know, airports, buses, trains, healthcare, schools and colleges, proximity to stores and restaurants are all going to be vital when you come to deciding the states or the part of the state that is going to be a good fit for you. So to give you an example of how those general wants um, influence where I live in the USA, I know that I need to be very well within an hour hour and a half drive of a major airport with direct flights to england my family are still in england so i want my parents to be able to fly to see me without having to take multiple connecting flights i also want to be within an hour of a big city because my husband and i love to go out we want big nights out and while it's wonderful living somewhere very rural we want the the big city life um that's important to us. And I also have kids who love to be outdoors. So I want to be near a lake or at least a river, somewhere that they can get out on the water. And I want to be uh, within an hour's drive of you know mountains, or at least we're in, we're in Northeast Atlanta right now. So big hills in the case of Georgia, but I want to be somewhere where there's hills or there's landscape. And then if my husband can hunt, that is another bonus. Weather is not a factor for me. I have lived through extreme humidity in Tampa and Florida. I've lived through Midwestern storms and I've lived through a Canadian winter. So I know that I can adapt to any kind of weather, but weather may be a big issue for you. So to recap, the first thing that you're gonna do when you are trying to decide the region of the USA that is a great fit for you is to think about those general wants, which are landscape and weather, social and political policies, financial policies, employment opportunities, and amenities. I would suggest that you pause right now and take a few minutes to just list out what those general wants are. It shouldn't take you more than five minutes because most people are pretty kind of clear on what they want at a very general level. So once you've done that, I want you then to go back through that list and I want you to list the things that you do not want. No matter where you move to, you are going to make compromises. And if you are very clear on what you want, but also what you don't want, then it makes it so much easier to know where you can make those compromises. And there are always going to be hard no's for you. I grew up on a sheep farm in England and just down the field from us was a pig farm. So I know that a hard no for me is being anywhere near a feedlot. I could have found the most perfect property or the most perfect neighborhood. And if there's any chance that I'm gonna smell animal manure, that is a hard no for me because that's what I smelt through my childhood. So that's a hard no. So you need to do, once you've decided your general wants, you need to go back and list those general you know do not wants and also if you have any hard no's and this is going to allow you to narrow down this amazing country to a certain region or certain states that are going to be a good fit for your general wants so when you've done that we can move to step two, which is listing your specific wants and needs. Again, you're gonna use the same categories, but this time you're gonna be much more detailed. So category number one is weather and landscape. So specifically landscape, what kind of landscape do you want and how close do you want it to your new home? So for example, do you want to be within an hour of a lake or the oceans or mountains? Do you want rolling hills visible from your window or would you rather see trees? Do you want to live on a certain number of acres or do you want to live by a lake? When you decide exactly what landscape you want close by, it allows you to narrow your search from a region of the USA to a state and then to a certain county or maybe a town within that state. But there also may be several different states that would fit your needs. So using my um, example for me, I could happily live in the Texas Hill Country, but I could also love living near the White Mountains in New England. And I'm very happy living where I live right now in Northeast Atlanta. So now you've got a little bit more specific about your landscape, you want to think about category number two, which is social and political issues. This is where you can get very specific about diversity, voter rights, reproductive rights, school curriculums, vaccine mandates, which again is a huge issue right now, and all of those policies that are really important to you. If you are passionate about social and political issues, this is gonna be a very big deciding factor on which state or which county or even which cities you put on your shortlist. And then category three is financial issues. Again, you can get very, very specific about state or county tax, or tax rates and property taxes and the cost of living and any other financial issues that are important to you. 
Obviously, when you think about financial issues, the closer you live to a big popular city like Nashville or Austin, where so many people want to move to, the more expensive your cost of living is going to be than if you lived in a less popular state in a less popular town. There are still so many places, especially in the South and the Midwest, where you can find a home for less than $200,000. They may be older, they may be further from town, but if you know where to look and you're serious about leaving your state, they, these places are available to you. Don't think that just because you don't have a $500,000 budget or you don't have equity in your home or maybe you're renting that you can't find an affordable home. You really can. And if you go on the Leaving California YouTube channel and look at some of the interviews that I've done with different realtors, you will see the huge variation in price points in different states. And then category number four is employment opportunities. For most people, this is one of the most critical factors in finding a new state to live in. If you work in a specific industry, you're gonna be limited to places where you can find employment. But right now, every single industry in every single state is desperate for employees. So it is the most perfect time to find a new job or to transfer with your company to a new state. And when you start looking for jobs, make sure you do so with an open mind to any opportunities that are out there. When my husband was looking for jobs about five years ago, we never even considered California. It was just, it would have been a hard no if anyone had suggested it. And it was so far from what we would ever consider that we didn't even think about it. And then he was headhunted for a job in Stockton, California, and it was just too good an opportunity for us to turn down. And so we just figured out how we were gonna make it happen. And it was that job opportunity that brought me to the Leaving California Facebook groups and changed my life. So when you are looking at jobs, be open to any opportunity that's out there because that job may just be a stepping stone to finding your perfect job in a state that you love. So once you've listed the states and cities or towns where you could find employments, you need to think about category number five, and that is amenities. This is going to be another critical factor that is going to narrow down your search significantly. So for example, do you or a family member who's traveling with you have specific needs? It may be healthcare facilities for medical needs or maybe school or extracurricular programs for your kids if they have a particular sport or hobby that they excel at. Or maybe it's being close to a certain college if you have older kids. And then you have to think about your hobbies. What do you need to be near to be able to enjoy that hobby? I always use the example of, you know, you're not going to live in Nebraska if you love to surf and mountain climb. So you need to think about um, that kind of thing. You know, what do you need close by for your um for your hobbies. You also need to think about how you live your life. If you are someone who runs to the store every night to pick up food or groceries, um, or if you work out and you want to be able to run and pick up an organic juice or something like that, you are probably not going to enjoy living in a rural area where your closest store is a Dollar General, maybe 10 miles away. So you need to list all of the things that you want from your lifestyle and what amenities are going to be able to support that lifestyle and then be able to find a community that provides all the amenities that you need. And then there is a final category that we need to add. And if you remember, I said there's going to be six wants, that, yeah, six needs that you have, and we've only listed five. Well, the final one that I always leave to last is your home. Because so many times when people decide that they're going to move to a new state, the first thing they do is go on real estate websites and then they fall in love with a home. And because the real estate market is so hot right now, that home sells. And then they fall in love with another home and that home sells. And this creates this huge sense of panic that you are never going to be able to find somewhere to live in a state that you love. Well, in this example, what I always tell people is it's just like going on vacation. When you go on vacation, the first thing you do is decide what kind of vacation you want. Do you want, you know, a beach trip with your kids? Do you want a fun city break with your spouse? Or do you want to go, I don't know, hiking in the mountains with friends? The first thing you do is decide exactly what you want from that vacation experience. And then you look for the places that will give you that vacation experience. And then the final thing you do is look for accommodation and it's very rare that there is only one place in that 
particular town that's going to give you the vacation that you want. Usually there's Airbnbs, there's all kinds of hotels, and it's just the same when you are looking for a home. What you do is you find the perfect town or community or the perfect place to live. And then when you found that perfect place that's gonna give you everything you want and need from your lifestyle, there are probably many different homes that are gonna be perfectly okay um, for you to move into. Some may be, you need a little bit more work, but when you are living in that perfect place, your home becomes less important. So I always tell people that create your shortlist of places that you want to live first but until you are ready to sign a lease or you know put in an offer on a home use those real estate websites just as a guide as to what's out there the kind of style and the kind of price point of the homes that are available on the in the places that are on your shortlist Okay, so now when you look at your specific wants, it should give you a much clearer idea of the region of the USA that suits you best and the states and cities and towns within that region that are a good fit for you. And then in my Make the Move Planner, I list the different websites that are gonna allow you to compare cost of living, crime rates, school ratings, and all of the other statistics that are gonna allow you to pinpoint exactly where you want to live. And there is a link to my Make the Move Planner in the notes section where you are watching this video but you can also do a google search um, it's a good place to start so once you've listed your specific wants you need to go back through your list and add the specific things that you do not want in each category that again this is going to allow you to decide where you can and cannot compromise and if you download my make the move planner i've got all kinds of check sheets in there and um, guides that go into a lot more detail um, and how you can get very very specific in all of these categories so once you've listed your general wants and your specific wants, you can move on to stage three, which is thinking about your lifestyle wants. When you move to a state that you love, it is so much easier to live a great life, but it's also so easy to fall back into old habits. And before you know it, you have just recreated the life that frustrates you right now, but it's just in a different state. If you're a workaholic right now, you're probably gonna be a workaholic in your new state. If you never work out now, you're probably not gonna work out in your new state. If your kids spend too much time on screens, they probably will do in your new state too. And if you or your spouse and partner fight, then probably with the stress of the move, you are gonna fight even more. But now is the perfect time to look at your life and reevaluate it. If you know what you want to change and you can find a place that fulfills all of your needs, change is always just a little easier. In my Make the Move Planner, I have a series of exercises that allow you to get very, very specific about how you want to spend your days, your evenings and your weekends and how to fix all of the things that you don't like about your life. But for right now, I want you to think of the following two questions. Question one, what do you want to be different about your life in a new state? And question two, what do you want to change? And then keeping those two questions in mind, we're gonna go back through the same six categories, but we're gonna apply them to your lifestyle wants. So if you remember, the first category is landscape and weather. What do you want to be different in your new state because of the landscape and weather? Do you want to spend more time outside, entertaining with family and friends and exploring your new state? Do you want to spend more time just sitting on your porch and looking at the beautiful view and reading? Or what new hobbies could you start in your new state because of the landscape or weather? For example, last year when we were living in the Central Valley near Stockton, we spent every other weekend skiing in Tahoe because the mountains were so close. And so we took advantage of the snow and the mountains so that my kids could learn to ski. So what is it that you have always wanted to do that you can do in your new state because of the weather or landscape? So category number two was social and political issues, but I've changed it here because to social time. So how will you socialize? Will you spend more time with friends? If you live near a town with an amazing nightlife, will you go out more? Will you live in a big neighborhood so that your kids are surrounded by friends and all those kids will come over and hang out all the time? Maybe everybody in the neighborhood will come over to your house because it's such a warm and friendly place to be. Or maybe you and your family will just spend more time together at home. Again, this is your chance to decide exactly what you want from your new life and find a place that allows you to do all of the things that you love. 
And then category number three is financial issues. So what do you want to be different about your financial situation in your new state? Will you budget better and spend less? Or maybe you'll actually spend more. Maybe you'll save up and budget for a boat, for an RV, maybe for a motorcycle or for something that you have always wanted. Again, this is the perfect time to focus on exactly what you want and then make a plan and a budget to make it happen. And then category number four is employment. Will you take a pay cut and a cut in hours so that you have less stress and more free time? Or maybe this is a time when you really step up and you start your own business or you really focus on your career. Maybe it's time to change careers. Like I said earlier, you know, with COVID and everything, so many companies are desperate for new employees. Maybe it's that time to get that dream job that you've always wanted or change careers. Do you want to work for a big corporate culture where you're going to be pushed to be your best? Or would you rather work for a smaller, maybe family owned business where you have much more control over your decisions? Or maybe you work from home. You know, this is your chance to decide exactly what you want because you spend so long at work that you want to enjoy your job. And if you can't enjoy it, you at least need to get like a sense of satisfaction um, or achievement from what you do. And then category number five, if you remember, is amenities. So do you want to live close to a gym and farmer's market so you can get fit and healthy? Do you want to live downtown so you can have a busy, interesting, fun social life? Or maybe you want to live in the middle of nowhere with no neighbors to bother you so your kids can run wild and you can grow all of your own produce. And then finally, number six is your home. What do you really want? What does it look like? How many bedrooms does it have? How many bathrooms does it have? Is it on a few acres or is it in a brand new, perfectly manicured neighborhood? And what are your neighbors like? This is your chance to design your perfect life. If you find this hard, and so many people do, I encourage you just to write down maybe one or two things that you would like to be better in your new life, in your new state. But if you're like me, you probably have a huge long list of hopes and dreams and wishes. And I always tell the people that I coach, unless you write down exactly what it is that you want and then create that plan to make it happen, you are very unlikely to make the changes that are needed or work towards getting exactly what you truly desire. And then sometimes even when you do create a plan, you may not get everything you want, but the clearer you are on what you want and what you don't want from your new life, the easier it is to find those places where you can compromise and the closer you are going to get to living that amazing life that you deserve. So now you have a list of your general wants. You have the wants that are specific to you and then you have the, the, the things that you want from your new lifestyle. I also encourage you to think about all the things that you love about where you live right now. Even if you think you hate the place that you live and you can't wait to leave, I can promise you when you get to your new state, there are gonna be things that you miss. So make sure that you've accounted for all the things that you love or take for granted about your current home, your current community and your current state in your list of wants and needs for where you're gonna to move to. I also encourage you to get your spouse or partner involved and any kids or family members that are traveling with you to work through this exercise too. If your partner or your kids is reluctant to move, talking about all of the things that they could have in their new state is gonna get them a little bit more open to the idea of moving. So that's it. I know that was a lot to cover, but when I coach people, this part of my program is where we spend the most time. Because as I said at the beginning, thinking about your future in a place that is perfect for you helps you get through the stress of moving. And being very clear on what you want and what you need and where you can compromise makes budgeting for your move and finding a home and a job and healthcare and schools and colleges and dealing with all of your other unique needs so much easier. So now that you are clear on what you want, you have several options. The first is to go it alone and figure out your next steps based on the list that you've just made. Watching the videos on the YouTube channel will also help you if you feel you've got it figured out. And there is a link to the YouTube channel guide um, in the um, comments where you're watching this video. You can also go to my website, alisonwoodall.com and download some of my free PDF check sheets. But your simplest, most efficient option is to download my Make the Move Planner because deciding where you're gonna to move to is just the first step on your journey to a new state and you have a whole lot more planning to do before you can move. 
I absolutely know that you can plan your move by yourself, but when you purchase my planner in about three to four hours, you can have your whole move planned out and it will save you hours and hours of watching videos on the YouTube channel, wading through hundreds of posts in Facebook groups and scanning through multiple websites and trying to decide what to do. Because I have laid everything out for you that you need to plan for in a systematic order and listed all the things that you need to take into consideration when you move. Using videos just like this, but so much shorter. I don't think there's any video that's longer than about five or six minutes and check sheets. We are gonna go much deeper into deciding where you need to move to and what you want your life to be like in a new state. Then we'll create a detailed budget that accounts for all of your costs, not just buying and selling a home and renting a moving truck. Those are the costs that everybody thinks about, but there are so many more things to budget for. And unexpected costs create so much unnecessary stress. So my Make the Move Planner has an Excel spreadsheet that lists everything you need to budget for so you don't forget anything. And the budgeting section is also packed with money-saving tips because according to a Forbes article I read yesterday, the cost of moving is expected to be 15 to 20% higher in 2022 than it was in 2020. So my goal is to help you move as quickly and as stress-free and as cost-effectively as possible. And then the final thing I'll do is I'll ensure that you plan for every logistical issue you'll encounter from employment and healthcare, schools and colleges, and of course, buying and selling your home and moving all your stuff. So if you would like to download my Make the Move Planner, go to alisonwoodall.com and hit the big red button and I will see you in the planner.